See the all-new Ford Focus, winner of the Irish Small Compact Car of the Year 2019 at the Ford Innovate 191 sales event. The Focus ST line features Ford Sync with touchscreen, smartphone mirroring, ST line design kit and cruise control. And right now you can order a 191 Ford Focus with an amazing 7-year warranty, 7-year roadside assistance and 2 years free servicing. All from just €23,525. See the all-new Ford Focus at your local participating Ford dealer. Offer ends January 31st. Ford Innovate. Driving better value for you. Ford. Go further. Price excludes delivery and related charges. Terms and conditions apply. See Ford.ie for details. Welcome into the NFL opening line report with our guest Teddy Covers. It's championship weekend, Teddy. You know what that means. Two games left. Big games to get into the Super Bowl. Welcome into the podcast. How are you? Hey, great to be here. Uh, Drew, all good on a Monday morning, man. I like... uh... Uh, when you win all week, is my Monday mornings are nothing but smiles, man. It's, it's it's real good over here. How about yourself? I'm doing good. It is January 14th. It's Monday, which means nine dollar Monday at Sports Memo. All plays on the board, discounted to just nine dollars. And I'm sure you're doing good, Teddy. We got 83 percent in the NBA over the last week, 88 percent in college basketball over the last 10 days, 72 percent. All plays, all sports since New Year's Eve. So it's been a, a great 2019 for you. W- what are you doing right? What can you share with us, man? Um, you know how it is, man. Number one, <laughs> I, uh, my, 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 I really don't change what I do between when I'm winning, when I'm losing. It's the same focus. And that's something that I really try to emphasize to guys who are just starting a handicap or even guys who have been doing it for a while. It can't be mercurial. So my process is the same whether I go 10-0 and or whether I'm 0-10. I'm going to sit down and break down the games one by one, make my short list, do my digging, and come out with plays. Now, obviously, you're going to run like this. A, you have to win more than your fair share of close games. And I've won. You know, uh, I've been winning a lot of the close ones. Uh, no question about that. you got to have some right sides. We've had plenty of right sides during this span uh, in both the NFL, uh, college hoops, and NBA. Uh, and I, I think, frankly... You know, once the college football work is done and now you're, okay, I'm focusing on these few NFL games and hoops, the focus is there right now where you're not distracted in 14 different directions during a time of year where it's just insane. So it's been a real good start to 2019, but that's all rearview mirror, man. Let's see what we can do tonight and this week for myself and my clients. Yeah, and if you're interested in jumping on uh, Teddy's Hot Streak, uh, you can always check out his page on sportsmemo.com. It's uh, very transparent, you know, wins and losses right there, all of his plays. And we have a special coupon code for this podcast. It's Teddy. that's A-A-T-E-D-D-Y, at checkout for his 30-day all-access pass. Brings it from $325.00. For the next 30 days, just 199 bucks, so $125 of savings right there with the coupon code AATeddy for his 30-day all-access. Teddy, let's talk uh, these championship games, the opening line report like we do every Monday. Let's also throw uh, so, some NBA, maybe some college basketball at the end. But we got, uh, what, let's just start it off at the top here. Both games on Sunday, January 20th. The L.A. Rams, New Orleans Saints, 311-312. Looks like 57 the total. Three and a half Saints in the Big Easy. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's four games left in the NFL season, and one of them's the Pro Bowl, uh, which, you know, uh, more power to you if you can find an edge uh, in the Pro Bowl. It's not something that I tend to handicap. So realistically, you know, three games left, these two, and then the Super Bowl. Uh, for the majority of uh, NFL betters. So uh, you can really focus in on the matchup. And obviously, when you get to this stage of the year, you're not expecting to see big line moves uh, off the openers. We didn't see uh, a big line move off the opener uh, of this one either. So we have seen, I guess I'll call it a little bit of Rams money to three and a half. You know, Penny's at three and a half plus 02 right now. Uh, CG is at three minus a, a quarter. They're taking... Uh, New Orleans, uh, all you can eat uh, in that regard. Heritage is at three, but uh, Jazz at three minus 30. The majority of books at three and a half. I think it stays there. I don't think this line's coming down to three. It might. I wouldn't be shocked if it doesn't. It's not going to hurt you. If you like the Rams, grab a three and a half now. You can find them at minus 110 at various shops, both in Las Vegas and offshore. Uh, If you like the Rams at three and a half, you can get that now, minus 110. That would be uh, the way to go for this line where this line is not going up to four. It can only go down to three total wise. 
Uh, at 57, there's a 56 and a half out there. There's a 57 and a half out there. But realistically, I don't sense a whole lot of movement on this total. Uh, you know, it, it may. It's not a situation, of course, where they're playing in the dome. There's not going to be any weather conditions. Certainly, we saw uh, the Saints' offense look a little bit out of sync uh, against Philly for extended stretches. New Orleans has done that before off buys. They tend to be a rhythm offense. One would think they may be a little bit better uh, this time around. But, uh, of course, in the trenches where this game likely to be decided, New Orleans' offensive line did a number on that Rams' defensive front in the first meeting between these two teams. That's how they hung 45 uh, on the Rams uh, in that meeting. Uh, certainly, L.A.'s defensive front has the potential to give the Saints' offensive line some trouble, much the way the Eagles' off, uh, defensive line uh, gave New Orleans all kinds of problems yesterday. That's why the Saints were unable to cover the number as eight-point chalk, even though Philly only scored two touchdowns on their first two drives and didn't score again the rest of the ball game. And, Teddy, what's your view on this uh, home field advantage here in, in, in New Orleans? Uh, you know, it looked pretty raucous at times uh, yesterday. Do, do you think, you know, h- how big of a of a factor is it on the NFL scale of home field advantages? I consider the Saints' home field to be as strong as any in the NFL. Uh, that being said, no, no home field in the NFL is worth more than three and a half points at the most. And my standard for New Orleans is a three, not a three and a half. Uh... And certainly, they're uh, you know they're, from when it comes to postseason track records, that's probably merited. Uh, so I, I give them a three, but I wouldn't I wouldn't be angry if someone said, hey, you know, this is worth this home field's worth three and a half. Okay, you know, I'm not going to argue with you, but uh, there aren't that many home fields in the NFL that are worth all that. You know, Foxborough's worth something, the Superdome's worth something for sure. And what about um kind of. The- the Saints on defense, you know, Jared Goff going to be playing in this atmosphere. I, I, I'm thinking this is the biggest game he's ever played in. Um, you think you think he could be rattled a little bit? Well, I mean, when you talk about the pantheon of young quarterbacks, you know, Goff is certainly a good one. He's not the one. He's not Patrick Mahomes in that regard, where you like already trust him in just about every spot. Uh, Goff played fairly well at New Orleans early this season. You know, the Saints. Uh, Took a big lead in that game. He rallied uh, L.A. from behind, and the Saints uh, dominated the fourth quarter uh, and ended up pulling away late to win 45-35. to 35. Goff played fairly well in that ball game, but am I sold on Goff as being able to, to make all the plays? No, uh, I'm not. Not against uh, this defense and not necessarily in this environment. Good stuff, Teddy. And guys, make sure to check out sportsmomo.com. Teddy has his 5% big ticket NFL game of the month up there. And because it's Monday, it's just $9 today. Um, Teddy, we can move on down the line. We got uh, 313, 314, the later game on Sunday. New England at Kansas City. New England having to go on the road here, championship weekend. And, and another thing here, Teddy, uh, just from a blimp's view, both of these two games pretty much lined very similarly. The, 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 the home team giving three and 57, pretty much primarily the total in both games. I thought that was interesting. But in this one, we got 313, New England catching three, 57 the total in Kansas City. Well, I mean, these are the four best teams. You know, we saw all the every team from Wild Card Weekend is now gone. Uh, and when you have the four best teams in the league, they, I'm, not, I'm not shocked at all to see, you know, three slash three and a half uh, for these two point spreads. Although, like I said, you know, that Saints at three and a half may not hold if you like the Rams grab the three and a half now. Um, as for New England KC, there were a couple of two and a halfs out there. Um, those are all threes now. There's never been a three and a half. There won't be a three and a half for this game, and that has everything to do uh, with New England's track record uh, in the postseason. Uh, obviously, the Patriots have been, you know, unbelievable. So here's our trivia question for today. The Patriots, I think it's 60, 68 games, whatever it's been. The last time they were an underdog. Drew, have you looked it up? I need to ask you. Do you know the last time the the, the, the Patriots were underdogs? So I'm going to give you 25 guesses. You're not going to guess the team that they were dogs to. <laughs> no, if you don't I, know. I, I do not know this answer. Do, do, do you really want me to just start throwing out teams? or? Absolutely not. Okay. okay. So, okay the last time the Patriots were a dog, it's going to blow you. Blow you away. No, it's not going to blow you. It will blow you away. <laughs> uh... <laughs> The team they were dogs to, Week 2, 2015, at Buffalo. Wow. No, I would have never gotten that. I know. I can give people, you can give people 20, 20 guesses. They're not going to get it right. Uh, obviously, it doesn't happen uh, very often. Last time they were underdogs in the postseason, 
came in the loss at Denver back in 2013 when the Broncos went on to get destroyed by the Seahawks uh, in the Super Bowl. Doesn't happen very often that we see Brady and Belichick in the dog role, and they've been brilliant when catching points. Absolutely brilliant. And obviously, you know, we're talking about the veteran squad versus the upstarts, and the upstarts are playing at home. They're going to be three. (laughs) Uh, The veteran squad certainly uh, a team that has been in far more of these big games than Kansas City has. And given the Patriots' track record as dogs, given Brady and Belichick's track record, given the fact that New England uh, has been to the Super Bowl, what, three times in the last uh, four years. And uh, uh, you know, this is a, a game where we would anticipate the Patriots to get a fair bit of betting support. All that being said, Kansas City and the, the level of defense they played against Indy. Certainly worth noting, they played a real good defensive game in Week 17 against Oakland. They played a real good defensive game last week, uh, you know, this past weekend against Indy. It's a Chiefs defense that's not going to get a whole lot of respect from the betting markets. If they play well, KC is going to be the undervalued commodity uh, in this matchup. And, of course, uh, we've seen the Patriots beat the Chiefs already uh, this season. That was a shootout uh, start to finish in that contest now we've got Brady you know is Brady ready to turn the mantle over to Holmes and Brady man you have to love those comments from New England where Brady's like everyone thinks we suck (laughs) Uh, all that being said you know you grade out the person just like last week we talked about that in the Chargers game you grade out the personnel for New England it's hard to make a case for the Patriots plus three they have Belichick and Brady but and they played a brilliant game against the uh, tired Chargers team no question Uh, doing it two weeks in a row on the highway not necessarily going to be easy for New England against a pretty explosive offense. Now, the weather here is supposed to be frigid. The early weather forecast temperatures in the teens, maybe in the single digits. Obviously, we're still a week out. But we're going to follow this closely. But weather conditions like that, number one, the Patriots playing them all the time. Number two, Brady's got a pretty good track record in that role. Uh, and uh, number three, if the total's that cold, if the game is going to be that cold, this total can only go down. We're already seeing... Is shading to the under at some of the leading indicator books. Penny, uh, Penny's, uh, you know, 57 to the uh, minus 9 cents to the under. Bookmakers, minus 15 cents to the under off of 57. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if we see some under money if it ends up being really, really cold. But, uh, I mean, Joe Public's going to expect a shootout in this game. That's what we saw the first time these two teams met. And certainly we talk about Brady <laughs> and Mahomes. We're talking about two QBs who can uh, sling the football around fairly well. Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, what they've done track record-wise this season. So for as much as the weather isn't a strong over, you know, it isn't going to attract any over money, uh, the public will. And uh, the books that cater to public betters, you'll see 57 and a half. And who knows how high this game gets. You know, stations at 57 and a half, coasts at 57 and a half, uh, Bavada's at 57 and a half. You know, all the square books, 57 and a half for this ball game, And it may well go up in those locations, even if, the weather turns out to be pretty darn cold and difficult for two teams to pass the football. Yeah, Teddy, this is a fascinating handicap. You broke it down really well. I I love the fact you bring up the weather. Um, One thing, you know, if it it is cold and a little windy, uh, Tom Brady with that zip spin, that that has a lot to do with why his success over the years in kind of uh, less than optimal weather conditions. And also Patrick Mahomes, you know, he has a really strong arm. And one thing under Cliff Kingsbury out there in Texas Tech, a lot of windy conditions. So he's going to be uh, used to used to kind of not the optimal weather conditions as well. How much do you use being kind of a expert weatherman, so to speak, being a week out and trying to kind of get ahead of a move? If, uh, you know, the, the weather forecast, how much do you factor it in being like six, seven days out, Teddy? Uh, Total-wise, if you want to be a serious total player, you got to be looking at the, uh, especially at this stage of the season, you got to be looking at the advanced forecast and you got to get down on what the f- prediction is. If that prediction doesn't bear out like it's supposed to, you can always get off it later in the week. Um, does that, I mean, is that, is that, did I answer your question? Yeah, that, that works, Teddy. Um, we got uh, Teddy covers 63% NFL full season. He's got his 5% play up at sportsmemo.com for just 9 bucks today on Monday. And, uh, Teddy, you also got uh, a college basketball 88% run. Your Wisconsin versus Maryland play up on sportsmemo.com. So check those out. You can get each of them for just 9 bucks right now. Teddy, we got a little time left on the podcast. Do you want to talk uh, – 
talk a little NBA here? Yeah, sure. Let's do a little NBA. What, Absolutely. What, what what games tonight um are are you kind of looking at here? We got 501 502 All of Boston them? Brooklyn. <laughs> All right, man, have at it. Let's let's go uh, open open mic night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll I'll run real quick uh through the NBA uh schedule of for today. Uh we have the Celtics and Knicks uh, tonight both teams uh coming off a loss. Nets coming off an ugly loss, you know. They went uh in, you know, they they played the last week uh in Boston. And got really slapped around in that ball game, um, and then had a bad loss at Toronto uh, later in the week. Ed Davis quote: "If you say you're going to be a playoff team, we have to beat playoff teams. It's easy to beat the Hawks, the Knicks, teams like that, but you really see where you're at when you play Toronto, Boston, at Houston, games like that. Get back to me around this time next week. I'll have a better idea where we're at. The Nets are taking this game uh, seriously, uh, and of course they've uh, during this 13 and five run, they only lost back to backs once." Uh, the only lost consecutive game once that came out of back to back situation uh, in Milwaukee uh, and D'Angelo Russell didn't even play in that ball game so the Nets have been pretty darn good uh, off a of defeat and I love the quote from Kenny Atkinson I rarely say this about our team but I didn't love the effort and execution talking about the loss uh, at Toronto when you have both of those go wrong that's when you get beat by 20 to beat an elite team on the road our effort and execution were nowhere near where it needed to be so we got good guys they understand it they understand we got Boston coming up I mean, you have that same effort and execution. You're going to make a blowout loss on the chin. This was a bit of humble pie. I expect the Nets to show up tonight. Kyrie Irving, not likely to go for Boston. Memphis and Houston, Rockets coming off a, uh, a pretty ugly loss. Harden, one of 17 from three-point range in Orlando. Now playing on the second night of back-to-backs at home. Obviously no Chris Paul. Obviously no Eric Gordon. Clint Capella uh, not going to go tonight. Uh, for the Rockets either, which is, you know, uh, James Harden and not a whole lot else. Uh, of course, the Grizzlies, since they're... The Grizzlies were had, were the number one seed in the West at one point this season. Since then, I think they're about like 7-15. and 15. Uh, They've really struggled of late. Uh, and they've taken a whole lot of money for this one. The total has been bet way up, 203 up to 208. Side has been bet way down, 7 down to 4.5 at this price. I'm not I'm not in love with this Rockets team, but at this price, they do look fairly cheap. Charlotte and San Antonio, we have a free play up at sportsmember.com right now. You can read my entire analysis for that ball game. I do uh, have a ticket in my pocket on San Antonio. Just faded them. The Hornets, who are just struggling right now. Detroit and Utah, I, I don't love the spot here for the Pistons at all. Coming off the big win. I mean, that was a big emotional win against the Clippers after a pair of ugly road losses. I don't trust them to maintain that intensity tonight in Utah. It will be jazz or pass for me in that one. Portland and Sacramento. These two teams met in Sacramento just a couple of weeks ago. What was that? It was right around New Year's. I remember the game very well. The Kings led by nine with two and a half to play. They didn't make another shot in regulation. Damian Lillard made all of his shots in regulation. Portland ended up stealing that game in OT. It was recent enough that I would expect uh, the Kings to remember uh, that uh, <laughs> defeat. But... When it comes to late game execution, it's very reasonable to predict that something that what we saw last time with the the Blazers able to execute their offense down the stretch and the Kings unable to execute their offense down the stretch, wouldn't be shocked at all if that happens again in this one if it's close enough for that to be in play at the end. And of course, last but not least, Clippers and Pelicans. Clips haven't played good basketball of late at all. But New Orleans, five wins on the season on the highway. They've been consistent money losers on the road. I don't trust either one of these teams tonight. Total, look at that total, 240, 240 and a half. You could have a game finishes 220 to uh, 120 to 119. It'll cash an under ticket in this one. They're expecting a torrid pace and not all that much defense at the Staples Center this evening. Teddy, great stuff in the NBA. Knows his stuff in NFL, NBA, college basketball. 83% run in the NBA. 88% run in college basketball. 72% all plays, all sports since New Year's Eve. It's been a great 2019. And we have the uh, special coupon code here, AA Teddy at checkout for his 30-day all-access at sportsmemo.com. Teddy, great stuff on the podcast. Best of luck this week. We'll have you on, uh, what, Thursday or Friday to do the uh, NFL Every Game on, on the Board podcast? I look forward to it. We'll do some NBA. We'll do some NFL. We'll do whatever you want to do, man. I'm happy to talk. <laughs> you know me. I like blabbing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Teddy, good stuff. And uh, Guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow, and uh, best of luck with your bets. 
What's the best thing about podcasts? It's that you can still listen to them during cream egg hunting season. Hunt down the rare white cream egg and be in with a chance to win a sweet prize of up to 10,000 euro. Join us, fellow cream egg hunters, and find out more by visiting Cadbury Ireland on Facebook and Twitter. At last, Heineken Zero Zero, the new beer with great taste and zero alcohol, is here. So cheers to working lunches, CrossFit crunches, party nights you choose to drive, the weeknight meetups to watch the big match live. To all of these things we say, Heineken Zero Zero, now you can.